yes in the previous session we discussed about the fundamentals of uh, audit wherein we just uh, revised the basically concepts uh, we had learned in the ca intermediate level so uh, we started with uh, uh, the audit process wherein uh, i told you that first the auditor is appointed then the objective and scope of um, uh, audit is determined then you have to understand the uh, entity you have to understand the cli uh, your client and then their internal controls as well and then you have to assess something called as risk of material misstatement only once you assess risk of material misstatement you are in a position to now plan the audit and once the planning is done you go to the site you go to the field and then you start the audit when i say you start the audit it simply means that you are going to apply audit procedures and upon application of audit procedures you get uh, obtain you try and obtain sufficient and appropriate uh, audit evidence once you collect all these evidences you draw conclusions on each item of the financial statement and thereupon now you are going to give opinion on the entire financial statement what opinion is the auditor supposed to give whether the financial statements are giving true and fair view or not we also discussed that there can be four different types of opinion which the auditor might give i told you we can have unqualified opinion which means the clean opinion we can have qualified opinion then we can have disclaimer in case the auditor is unable to obtain sufficient and appropriate audit evidence and finally if everything seems to be uh, not as per the financial reporting framework if everything seems to be misstated we can go for adverse opinion okay so uh, we, we just covered few terminologies i told you about opinion then we discussed true and fair view i made you understand the concept of misstatement and and then of course what is material misstatement uh, then we discussed about the scope internal controls risk of material misstatement etc the entire audit process basically and we ended up the uh, session with uh, the different types of uh, opinion okay now today uh, we shall start as i told you uh, in the introductory session also that majority of the portion that we have now in our ca final syllabus pertains to the standards be it standards on auditing or standards on review assurance or let's say uh, uh, other services okay so uh, so we have to have a good knowledge about uh, all the standards but before we dive into the standards i would again want you to brush up the concepts with respect to standards the basic concepts with respect to standards that i am expecting you had covered at the intermediate level but before we dive into the standards let's just quickly uh, recall all those concepts okay so i am still in the chapter of fundamentals which is chapter number zero and today we shall start with the basics of as you can see we have something called as quality control and engagement standards quality control as well as engagement standards okay now in order to understand this this is very simple concept but yes let's uh, try and understand this guys guys uh, you know a chartered accountant in practice let's say if you become a chartered accountant generally either you will indulge in the profession in the form of let's say practitioner you will uh, go into practice or maybe you'll join some company and be under employment right now globally a chartered accountant in practice is called as a practitioner okay this practitioner this practitioner can give primarily two types of services the practitioner once when he is into practice and he is rendering services to the society he can primarily render two different kinds of services what are those services number one service if i tell you is with respect to assurance okay and the other service we call it as others only you can call it as related service or others for the time being. okay now what is this assurance what is this assurance try and understand this assurance service i can further classify it into different things okay so what is assurance let's uh, let us first try and understand okay now if please understand this if let's say the subject matter let's say i am an auditor or a, a practicing professional the subject matter that i am trying to check okay if the subject matter pertains to 
historical financial statements if my subject matter is historical financial statement now what do you mean by historical financial statement historical financial statement means things which has already happened events which have already taken place now for example if i talk about the financial statements which has uh, let's say year ended 31st march 2023 it is historical financial statement because things have already happened okay so assurance service can be with respect to historical financial statement sorry okay or else let's say it can be with respect to what is that yeah or it can be with respect to the subject matter let's say i'm calling it as other than historical financial statement now what can be other than historical financial statement let's say projected financial statements prospective financial statements things which have not yet happened okay now I'm going to talk about the first aspect if your subject matter is historical financial statements historical again let me repeat things which have already happened okay mm -hmm. now here guys if you look at the financial statements if you let's say if you are checking upon the financial statements and then upon checking the financial statements you give a reasonable assurance you give what kind of assurance a reasonable assurance what is reasonable assurance reasonable assurance means it is a high level of assurance but not absolute assurance you are giving a high level of assurance to the users of the financial statement that the financial statements let's say give true and fair view okay if we give reasonable assurance then this particular work is called as audit which was primarily our area of attention the entire subject in ca intermediate uh, examinations okay so if my subject matter is historical financial statements and i am giving reasonable assurance to the users of financial statement then this work will be called as what audit okay again guys let me tell you assurance i am giving reasonable assurance when i check the financial statements i will put my signature on it i am giving what kind of assurance i am giving reasonable assurance reasonable assurance to whom to the users of financial statement can anyone tell me who are the users of financial statement please write it in the chat box who can be the users of financial statement yes please guys who can be the users of financial statement Yes, shareholders, owners, employees, creators, lenders, absolutely correct. Yes, Suraj, you are correct. Yes, fine, banks, of course, government authorities for taxation purpose. So all of you know this, that users of financial statement, what users means, all right. So again, if the subject matter is historical financial statements and I'm giving reasonable assurance on it, I'll be calling this work as audit. Again, what is meant by reasonable assurance, guys? Reasonable assurance means a very high level of assurance, but of course, it is not going to be an absolute assurance. An auditor, all of you know this, we cannot give 100% guarantee that the financial statements will be free from material misstatement. Hence, if you are able to recall the definition of audit, I told you in audit, we give what? We express opinion. I told you opinion is not equal to uh, a certificate, right? We express only what? Something called as opinion when we are auditing the uh, financial statements. We never give certificate in case of uh, audit okay anyway so uh, coming back to this part yeah so you give reasonable assurance all right now this work is called as audit so if guys the subject matter is historical financial statements you are checking it you give reasonable assurance the work is called as audit but when you are doing the work of audit all of you know this you have to follow something called as standards on auditing okay so we have to follow some standards institute has given us certain standards they are of the view that whenever we are doing any such work with this which is with respect to historical financial statement that means if you are doing audit we have to follow standards on auditing okay now if again the subject matter okay let me just number it uh, i'll put number one here if the subject matter again is historical financial statement but you are only giving let's say a very moderate level of assurance here what kind of assurance moderate or let's say limited level of assurance okay then this work will be called as review 
so if the subject matter is historical financial statements okay but then uh, our level of assurance that we are giving is only moderate or limited we call this work as review and if you are doing the work of review guys as chartered accountants we have to follow something some standards which we call it as standards on review engagement we call it as sre okay now if let's say uh, if i talk about uh, other than historical financial statements if the subject matter is let's say other than historical financial statements of course this simply means we are now going to give an opinion on things which has not yet taken place which has not yet happened okay so of course you are not going to give an absolute assurance or a reasonable assurance here we are going to give what kind of assurance here we are only going to give moderate level or limited assurance here okay but what is the difference does the subject matter here is different if this is the work that you are doing you know this work is called as assurance now don't be confused guys probably uh, institute was not able to come up with any new word for this and hence they kept it as assurance don't get confused that you know this type of service is also called as assurance meanwhile i was saying that the master thing i mean uh, all the practitioners give assurance kind of services the names are quite similar but yes please understand when i say this assurance this is a master assurance this is an umbrella term which will include your audit review as well as other assurance okay but for this particular thing probably institute was not able to come up with any name so they have named it as assurance only anyways so i hope you have understood now when you are doing the work of assurance okay you have to follow something called as standards on assurance engagements which we call it as sae okay now this is the first part of uh, uh, you know uh, service which a practicing chartered accountant can render to the society however apart from the assurance work there are lot of other things which a chartered accountant in practice can do okay now for example under the others part okay let's say you are one of my clients and um, let's say you have a subsidiary company also but you don't know how to do the consolidation of holding and subsidiary so you approach a chartered accountant and he makes the consolidated financial statements for you he only made the financial statements he is not giving any opinion there so he made the financial statements as per your request and he handed over the documents and the financial statements to you here he has not given any assurance he has done just done some uh, basic work which management was supposed to do but let's say management were not very competent so they approach a chartered accountant right so uh, the chartered accountant may made a consolidated financial statement so this doesn't mean that he gave assurance here he has only done a compilation engagement okay let's say uh, you have approached a chartered accountant to just to review the debtors i am not giving any assurance here i am just checking the debtors part so all this kind of services let's say uh, you have got a letter from the income tax department and now you are scared and now you want a chartered accountant to represent your case in front of the authorities okay so this may be again i am not giving any assurance here but this is again will come under what other services so when you are giving other services others means that you are not giving any assurance here okay so i i will call it as i'll call it as related services uh, okay and here in this related services guys i am not giving any assurance hence i am writing no assurance i am not giving any assurance here okay but when you are doing such work okay uh, anyways the name is only uh, related services okay i just wrote this here wrong wrongly okay uh probably yes in when you are doing other work you are not giving any assurance and what is this wo work called as we call it as related services okay and institute is of the opinion that even when you are giving related services wherein i am not going to give any assurance still there are certain standards which you have to follow we call them as standards on related services srs okay so now we have four different categories of standards standards on auditing then standards on review engagement standards on assurance engagement and then standards on related services okay all these standards guys all these standards now are in your ca final syllabus 
earlier only standards on auditing were there and not that to not all the standards on auditing okay 800 series was not there in your course but now it has been incorporated and at the same time uh, standards on review engagement assurance engagement and related services has also been now incorporated in your ca final mm -hmm. syllabus okay now why did i tell you all these things guys please understand you need to first understand before we dive into the concept of standards you need to know the different types of standards okay now these four standards are collectively called as engagement standards why engagement engagement means work okay so what kind of work you are involved in accordingly then uh, the standards will apply so if the engagement is with respect to audit then standards on auditing will apply if it is a review engagement then standards on review engagement will apply and likewise okay now there is one more standard you have to understand these four standards are collectively called as engagement standards engagement standards is an, again an umbrella term okay but institute says that being a chartered accountant in practice whatever kind of work you do we have to keep quality uh, you know as our utmost uh, or let's say as our top priority okay so whether you are doing the work of audit or a review or it's just an assurance engagement or even if it is just related services wherein you are not giving any kind of assurance still standard says if you are giving any of these four services you need to maintain quality okay and for uh, ensuring quality we have a quality control standard we have one more category of standard in our course which we call it as quality control standards and at the moment we have one quality control standard in our course which is sqc1 standards on quality control so please remember guys always engagement standards means these four standards sa sre sae and srs whereas quality control standard is totally different however if you do a if you are engaged in any of these engagements whether it is audit review or assurance or related service you have to comply with the requirements of quality control standard that means sqc1 will always be applicable okay so i'm i'm, I'm hopeful that this is very clear to you and on the basis of this now if you read the heading of the topic it is quality control and engagement standards so we have got two categories of standards i have told you already engagement standards is what it says let's read the point the following standards issued by auditing and assurance board under ICI are collectively called as what engagement standards which four standards are collectively called as engagement standards so let's read the options we have standards on auditing standards on review engagements then we have standards on assurance engagements and standards on related services let's quickly uh, okay uh, let's quickly go through these four terms it says standards on uh, auditing it says these standards I told you audits is uh, applied on what is the subject matter here historical financial information okay and what kind of assurance is given in standards on auditing guys please remember we what kind of assurance if you want you can take a note of it reasonable level of assurance is given so when i say reasonable assurance it means what it is a high but not absolute level of assurance had it been absolute level of assurance it would have been called as certificate it would have been then called as certificate okay then what is standard on review engagement now does all the students who are who has joined online has anyone ever done a review engagement in your office probably if you have some list, listed entities as your client you must have taken the work of review has anyone done it Reem Riyas, I'll just take up your question. But yeah, has anyone done? No. Okay. All right. So what is review? In very layman's terms, if I tell you guys, please consider review as a younger brother of audit. Uh, in audit, we check things very extensively. We check their uh, accounting system. We get to know about their internal controls. And then accordingly, we determine our nature, timing, and extent of audit procedures. But in case of review, review is like, you know, uh, it it is like applying auditing skills, but we don't check things in you know such uh, level of detail it is kind of an overview okay so please understand these standards are to be applied in review of historical financial information while a review involves application of audit skills and techniques and gathering of evidence uh, it does not involve a detailed assessment so this is the main important line 
difference between audit and review it does not involve a detailed assessment of accounting and internal control systems which we generally do in case of what audit okay and hence you also know this guys because we are checking less of things here as compared to audit what kind of assurance is given the level of assurance provided in review report is correspondingly less hence the kind of assurance that we give here we call it as what we call it as moderate or let's say we can also call it as limited level of assurance okay all right, I'll take up all your questions. Okay, let me just finish the remaining two portions. Okay, then we have standards on assurance engagement. What is the subject matter here? Very simple, other than historical financial information, let's say like projected financial statements, etc. And uh, if you if you remember, like in case a company comes up with an FPO or an IPO, they have to come up with a prospectus. Okay, in companies like you must have covered this. So in prospectus also, uh, there is a requirement to give uh, give you know a uh, projection of coming uh, five years okay so things which has not happened and then a chartered accountant probably will uh, just um, certify that right so things which has not happened uh, uh, and you are you are giving your opinion on that it will be called as what assurance engagement and of course what kind of assurance are you going to give here you are you are in this case also you are going to give moderate or let's say limited assurance okay and then we have standards on related services it can be um, on like um, here you can just first write that there is no assurance here no assurance is given okay and generally it is applied on let's say reviewing the debtors if you do compilation engagements let's say you have consolidated the financial statements of their company etc okay so we are not giving any assurance here but guys the thing is no matter what kind of engagement you are involved in you are delivering or giving service to a client you have to ensure what quality hence sqc standard on quality control are to be applied for all services covered by the engagement standard so whatever engagement standard whatever work you are doing uh, you have to adhere to the requirement of the quality control also okay so uh, sqc uh, is a quality control standard right so please remember guys engagement standards how many engagement standards we have four and we have four diff uh, four different categories of engagement standards and quality control basically is a standard uh, we have only one standard here but it will be it will be applicable for all types of work that you are doing okay now uh, yes so this is the entire scenario and again i'm telling you all these standards now are there in your course the in the introductory session also i told you i'll just show it to you once again if i uh, go by the index of this particular uh, new syllabus yes so from chapter number one from chapter number one if you can see we have quality control then all the standards from chapter one till chapter number 11 from chapter one till chapter number 11 is all about standards okay they have just divided the standards in the form of different chapters but out of 19 chapters that we have 11 is based on standards so that is why we have to have a very good understanding of these standards okay all right now i have few questions here ca certificate provided to bank comes under which service now see guys certification is uh, totally different than audit okay of course when we give certification for something okay that simply means that we are giving 100 percent assurance okay let's say i also give some sometimes certificate for of turnover uh uh, to my clients they want to uh, produce the certificate in different agencies or authorities so we do give certificate certificate is when we are very sure of the things 100 percent sure of the things we can give certificate also okay that comes of course it is a kind of assurance only but what kind of assurance 100 percent assurance but uh, uh, please understand in audit we would always give what we'll always give reasonable assurance because why the reason is 
in in ca inter probably you have heard you must have come across this word inherent limitations of audit we shall do it uh, in final level also when we quickly go through sa 200 but because of there are certain inherent limitations in the subject in the in the subject of auditing in the profession of auditing uh, and because of which we are only able to give reasonable assurance hence in audit we never give certificates okay I have one more question is review a statutory requirement yes in li li listed companies there are certain requirements with respect to qu uh, quarterly review so we have to review the financial statements quarterly and then the review report is uploaded uh, with the SEBI also in case of listed entities okay so that is why I asked if any one of you uh, uh has done review does engagement standard standards cover internal audit no engagement standards will not cover internal audit internal audit is totally different we have sias for internal audit standards on internal audit is totally uh different we do have a chapter on internal audit we'll discuss about sias there but of course sia is not made mandatory yet standards on internal audit is not yet mandatory we'll just discuss few basics about it okay all right fine so yeah i hope um, the basics uh, of ab about the four different categories of engagement standards is uh, clear to all of you okay any doubts guys is it clear everyone okay 